What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with a brand new video for you guys today and today's another update one and boy oh boy have they uh they've really done it this time. So guys a brand new update will be coming uh November the 7th and this is the Tender Loving Care number three and uh yeah I gotta say they've done a really good job here. So guys we're gonna be going through it hopefully it all comes out on the proper day and stuff like that but uh we're gonna be going through it and as you can already tell there's a bunch of uh breeding that's now possible with all the insects and everything. So we're gonna go through all the details and we'll uh, we'll see what we've got. So our TLC3 update approaches on November the 7th and aside from the dedicated reworks of the Stego and the Mammoth, we've added a bunch of quality of life changes to make your time on the Ark more enjoyable. We're particularly excited about introducing insect and wyvern breeding to the game and look forward to players getting their new breed lines going. Wyverns are the wyverns are the more most exciting thing for me to be honest. Um, insects they should have been implemented from the beginning, I guess. But wyvern breeding that's that's dope. We're, we're keen for that because they do have the crystal wyverns breeding. Um, so now all the other normal ones will be breedable. Uh, we're aware these creatures may need some balance once breed lines get underway, and we'll monitor and adjust as necessary. So guys, these are the new breedable creatures. We've got a whole list here. It also gives us their uh, hatch time and their maturation. So the insects and creatures can, that can now be bred are spiders, onyx, moths, scorpions, arthropleurs, mantises, and the mighty wyverns. Uh, so the wyverns are unchanged. Hatching, gestation, and maturation time are as follows for the, for the following. So the spider has an egg hatch time of an hour and 25 minutes. Total maturation time of one day and one hour. Uh, the bat has a total gestation time of four hours essentially. Uh, maturation time is one day and four hours. The moth has a one hour and 30 minute hatch time, same as the Kairuku. Maturation time is one day and six hours. These maturation times, they must be official because I swear it doesn't take me this long. Um, scorpions, egg hatch time an hour and 59 minutes, essentially two hours matches the raptors. Maturation time is a day and 14 hours, essentially. The Arthropleura, two hours and 30 minutes. Maturation time, two days and three hours. This is going to be broken as heck, I reckon. The Arthropleura. The other ones, they're kind of just more so, um... What's the right word? More kind of, not PvE, but like towards people that don't really care too much about PvP. Because the, the spider, the bat, the moth, the scorpion, they don't really fill a niche or anything. It's kind of more for like people that collect them sort of thing and breed them for colors. Arthropleura, however, is used for PvP due to it having that uh, metal destroying attack. So I can see this being really broken, especially once people start getting imprints on it and mutations for melee damage. This guy's going to be really, really strong for PvP. So I do sense a nerf incoming for the Arthropleuras, but nonetheless, we'll go over that when the time comes. As for the Mantis, 2 hours and 46 minutes to hatch, and then the maturation time is 2 days and 6 hours. So, pretty keen for that. Wyverns are still the same though, so that's what they are normally. Uh, now, as well as breeding, there is a bunch of creature of quality of life changes. So, essentially, they've updated some creatures, uh, given them some new abilities, and this is where they've really, I think they've done a really good job. So, in addition to insect breeding, we went back and showed some love to a few of Ark's well-known inhabitants. So, the Giga, they reduced the maturation time by approximately 15%. So... It takes a, it's a little bit faster now to uh, to raise a giga. The Diplocallus, which is the aquatic oxygen provider, they increased its base health by 33%, as well as its movement speed when ridden by 25%. So these guys are going to be really good for a, a base entry team for going into the water now because of their base movement speed increase. That means they're going to pretty much be able to outrun most things in the ocean, which is pretty exciting. Uh, this is also a really cool one. The Thylacolio got a slow draining bleed to its basic attack. So it's now going to be dealing more damage with a bleed effect, which makes sense. Have you seen the teeth on that thing? Uh, the Mega Chelon reduced depth requirement for breeding, so that is now breedable on other maps. Awesome. Makes things a lot easier for breeding the Mega Chelons. Wyverns are now breedable. Zombie Wyverns cannot be bred, however, and the slightly stat rebalance now that they're breedable and bring them in line with Crystal Wyverns. So I don't know if that's going to nerf them or make them a little bit stronger. I'm not too sure on that regards. We'll go over it when the patch notes drop. Uh, the Megalodon, this is pretty exciting as well. They reduced the gestation slash aging times to match Megaloceros, which is the, the D. Uh, they also received a pack bonus. So damage reduction and damage increase per pack member within range. So essentially like a Dire Wolf pack. Um, and they also got a bleed to its basic attack, which, you know, makes sense. That's really good to see as well. Uh, the Jaboa got an increase to its base weight capacity from 55 to 120. 
Uh, the Anki got an increased metal weight reduction by 10%, which is really good. So instead of 75%, now it's 85%. The Dodicarus, you can now turn when rolling with a Dode. Uh, because you before you couldn't actually, you couldn't turn, you would just go in a straight line. And the Basilisk now has eyes. Basilisks were very soulless creatures back in, well, they still are. Now, another really cool thing, they've got a Taming HUD now. So, Taming stuff is going to be a lot easier now. So, use the interactive Taming HUD to monitor your unconscious, wild, tameable creatures. Keep track of the following. Creatures gender and level. Taming and unconscious progress, taming effectiveness, current health and food status, distance from your location, and an option to track specific creatures via in-world waypoints, which can be hovered over for an over-screen dis overlay, displaying additional information. So let's take a look at this, because this is the overlay. So this shows you all the creatures that you've knocked out. So you can see here, this guy's got uh, a 100 Quetz knocked out, a Rex knocked out, an RG, a Paresa, a Bronto, and a Trike. And it shows you their unconscious meters, their taming meters, their health, and their food, as well as their taming effectiveness. Which, honestly, this like really blows me away. And you can actually select which ones you want to track. So you can see here, track all, untrack all, and this guy's obviously got these three tracked at the top here. So it tells you their distance from you, which I'm assuming you'll be able to do with these ones once you hit track all and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Um, this is going to make things a lot easier. Now, I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing either, because a lot of people will probably say, well, now you're just making the game too easy. But if you ever knock something out, especially like a high level dino, and you've lost where you knocked it out, this thing's going to come in handy. It's only taken five years for this to be implemented, guys. So like, Come on, yeah, you, you kind of can't go wrong there. Uh, as well as that, they have a whole heap of new stuff. So, boss element reward increase. So, we've decided to increase the boss element reward on some maps to bring the Ellie more into line with where we're at with new expansions. So, the reward from the island and center bosses has been increased by 100%. 100%. So, you're essentially getting double what you would get originally. Uh, if only this was around when I was doing the bloody arc story on the on the island. Uh, as well as that, the element reward from Scorched Earth has been increased by 50% as well. We can definitely capitalize on that one. Uh, some new stuff as well. A new feature, turret radius settings. A quick and easy way to update the settings of your nearby turrets within a radius. It's set to currently match the official server turret limit radius, but players can also toggle viewing the radius on and off. The current functionality it supports is as follows. So you can now do this, all, all of these you can now do on like a, a radial wheel. Um, so instead of doing it individually, you can now do all the turrets at once. So you can set a pin code to all turrets in range. You can set uh, the ability to copy all settings to all turrets in range. And you can copy settings to pin code selected turrets in range, which is really good. The settings which can be copied are power, state, range, targeting, and warning. Uh, we are anxious to get these community requests and quality life of improvements into your hands. The Tender Loving Care update launches on November 7th on all platforms. Um, we realize the TLC patch releasing at the same time as Extra Life is less than ideal for players. To compensate, we'll be extending the duration of the Extra Life boosted rates so everyone can enjoy the boost. So, yeah, guys. That's, um, that's what's going on. Now, next week on Tuesday, Wednesday, the 27th slash 28th, we plan to update our server transfer infrastructure. The intent behind these upgrades is to resolve problems with character loss, player timeout, latency, and failure to download or upload player data at times. So they're working on a bunch of glitches that have been happening where you've been transferring players and you, they just vanish. Um, and the latency issues as well. We've recently put a lot of time into refining the transfer logic and combined with the hardware upgrades, we should see some significant improvements with our official servers. Our goal is to get these upgrades to you as soon as possible, particularly before our extra life weekend where we expect a lot of player transfer footprint to take place so that our server and transfers are running as smoothly as possible. Now, this is the big kicker. We anticipate that the transfer downtime could last up to 24 hours, and this could be simultaneously on PC, Xbox, and PS4 or take place one after the other. We'll provide a more specific timeline of when this update will take place per platform early next week. So you're not going to be able to play Ark for 24 damn hours, which, that's a long time. So hopefully the, the transfer and infrastructure upgrade is really worth it because uh, it's going to be down for a, a, a long time. But guys, that's 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 what this is all coming on November the 7th. 
So I'm really keen for this. Um, we're going to be doing a ton of videos on all the babies. We're going to be doing a ton of videos on all the changes, all the ones that matter anyway. Um, and I'm really keen for this taming HUD. I, I personally don't really not don't really care too much about the taming HUD. Main reason being because it's been five years since I've been playing Ark. I know how to, to deal with all the taming stuff and how to keep track of where it is and all that sort of stuff. Um, but for like newer players that do pick up the game, this is going to be a really good incentive and make things a lot easier to tame. Um, so I'm really keen for that. And it is going to be on official as well. So that's going to really help out some players on official as well, those that are starting. Um, but the bug breeding, that's really cool. Same as the wyvern breeding, that's really dope. And some of the new TLC dinos um, are really, really excited as well. For example, the Thylacolio, uh, the Megalodon, and probably... Uh, the Yankee are probably my... No, sorry, the Dodicarus are probably my favorite because you can now bloody turn with the dude while rolling. You know how fun that's going to be? We're just going to break bloody arc with a turning Dodicarus that rolls. So, uh, yeah, but that's that's what's coming. Let me know what you guys are most excited for, whether it's the breeding, what one you're most excited for breeding, uh, whether it's the TLC coming for the dinos or the taming HUD. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys think this is going to help arc as well. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's going to wrap up the video for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe down below for more. Like I said, we'll be covering all these. And uh, hopefully you guys have a great day. And I'll catch you in the next one.